Let's talk more about uh, UK politics now because it is in the papers if you can actually get past the front pages. Joining me now, Rob Merrick, who's a political journalist. Good morning, Rob. Good morning. Really good to talk to you. Right, should we talk? There's so much that we can talk about. Rachel Reeves gave an interview yesterday. She was really careful on in her wording here because we've had these independent reviews saying the public sector need to have a 5.5% pay rise. Many people are saying, oh, here we go again, Labour government in, they're going to be held to ransom by the unions. Rachel Reeves saying, well, we're certainly not ruling out an above inflation pay rise for the public sector. Now, if they went to 5.5% that across the public sector, that would be about 10 billion quid, money we don't have. Yeah, I suppose British politics can seem a bit tame, can't it, in comparison with what's going on across the Atlantic. But uh, yeah, it's an important week here as, as well. And of course, the, the new Labour government is, well, it's living the dream at the moment, isn't it? It's in this post-election glow. Its numbers are up. It's never been more popular. It never, it probably will never be more popular than it is this week. But there's these couple of challenges hurtling down the road, the first of which is public sector pay. I think um, <clears throat> she did make some very interesting comments yesterday, Rachel Reeves, because, as you say, she didn't just bat away the idea... <clears throat> excuse me, the, uh, above inflation and pay rises, but she addressed the underlying reason for why they're deemed to be necessary, which is if you're going to rebuild, rebuild public services, which is what Labour wants to do, you have to have the staff. You can't do it without the staff unless you attract them, and you can't attract them unless you offer them similar pay uh, to what's being offered in the private sector, where pay rises are running at 5.5%. We know that teachers and nurses have suffered big falls in real pay over the last decade, Rachel Reeves was recognising that to rebuild public services, that pay gap has to be closed, uh, and uh, whatever the cost, and she's going to have to find at least some of that money, if not all of the 10 billion that you're talking about. So I, I'm very mindful, of course, the nurses, if I agree, uh, remember correctly, accepted a 5% pay rise, a lump sum of 1,655. We've still got the junior doctor strike rumbling along, haven't we? They are holding out for a 35% pay increase. This is where it may start to unravel. There is no way I can see that Labour will give a 35% pay uplift to the junior doctors. They've said as much as that. And of course, we've seen so many strikes, the burden on the health service, so many millions of appointments cancelled as a result. Do you, th do you think that actually this will be the comeuppance for the Labour government? I think it's going to have to be very carefully handled. But the, when it comes to the junior doctors' pay, that's been consistently misreported. The junior doctors themselves have indicated they would have settled under the last government to a similar deal to, to what they received in Scotland. I can't remember the figure, but it was way, way below 35%. Well, no, so, so the proposal, the last proposal was 8.8% .8 plus 3%, 11%, and they said no, and they walked out of those talks. No, they indicated they would have settled for a similar deal to Scotland of somewhere in that arena and for a long-term or medium-term aspiration to um, restore the lost pay of the last decade, which they say amounts to 35%. From where I sit, that looks like a deal that can very easily be done by the Labour government. I'm sure that will be done in the weeks to come. But at what level? At what level? 11? Well, that, it was a very similar number to that that the junior doctors agreed to in Scotland and everything that they indicated was they would have settled for a similar deal in England. It was a terrible mistake by the CNAC government not to settle. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that's true. I, I'm not sure that's true. When you've got people like Vivek, Vivek Trevedi and Rob Lawrenson and the rest of them and the BMA, I'm not sure that's true. OK, well, we can probably agree to disagree on that. But, but I think the important point is that Labour is recognising that they have to give a, above inflation pay rises to public sector staff as the only way to start to rebuild public services by attracting and keeping the staff that those services need. Whether these uh, the NHS workers and the, do and the teachers will get 5.5%, it's probably in doubt, but I think they could get somewhere close to that because that's the, in the, what Rachel Reeves indicated yesterday. And very quickly, if I can, time is tight. Uh, are they going to stand their ground on the two-child benefit cap? You've got David Blunkett saying they need to stand firm on that. You've got Keir Starmer saying they're going to stand firm on that. You've got noises off and lots of backbenchers. Very unhappy. Again, on the two-child limit, I think it's a matter of when, not if. I assume that in the budget in the autumn or soon afterwards, the two-child limit will go because, again, Labour is making great strides by in saying it will have a child poverty strategy. You cannot have a strategy to cut child poverty while keeping in place the two-child limit, which is taking well, thousands well, well, of Well, hang on a minute. Away. What about David Blunkett saying that you can have two children and if you want more, you have to be able to afford them?
Well, David Blunk is not a cabinet minister. He's a dinosaur from the past. When I read his um, comments this morning, I was amazed by them. He seemed to be arguing that there was there was no evidence that the two-child limit is inflicting huge problems on families and increasing child poverty. It most definitely is. Those figures were published last week. There's about a half a million children who are hit by the two-child limit. The one and a half, sorry, half a million families, which include one and a half million children. That's a huge number. Uh, so I think the issue here is that the Labour Party will remove the two-child limit at some point, possibly even as soon as the autumn. What they don't want to do is give in to a backbench rebellion and do it now. And, and so, so well, what's interesting? In but they, what's interesting about this is you've got people on the right, like Nigel Farage, saying actually it does need to go, and you've got the Labour Party traditionally would would agree with that now, not agreeing to that. Well, I think that's a really good point, David. Yes, when you've got someone like Suella Braverman saying it's got to go, it's got to go, hasn't it? It's quite clear Labour Party, the Labour Party can't force its MPs to keep. Uh, a harsh policy which Suala Braverman wants to remove. Uh, it's clear the way <laughs> the wind is blowing. But it's all about having a properly, for Labour, about having a properly choreographed announcement. Rachel Reeve wants to unveil the figures next week. This is the state of the finances. And from this position, I can work out what I can afford. And at that point, she wants to set out a path to acting. She doesn't want to be forced into it by her home back ventures. And that's why if there's a vote this week, it'll be very difficult for her. Uh, Rob, thanks ever so much for your time. Rob Merrick there, political journalist.